so I gave my talk uh, the rather dubious title, Does Gratitude Work in the Workplace? Uh, because I made a decision recently. Basically, I'm throwing in the towel. I can't take it anymore. My critics are correct. Uh, gratitude does not work. I've decided that. Right. So basically, I, I recant everything I've ever said about gratitude. And I can't think of a better day, a better time to announce that right here, right now. So basically, I'm stepping off the gratitude wagon. Okay. Um, it's, just, it's just time, you know? I mean, seriously, what was I thinking about gratitude? You're saying all these great claims about it, that it's the key that opens all doors, it's the secret to life. It's really not, you know? I mean, gratitude really does not work, right? It is, as, as the critics say, it is merely the hope, secret hope of further favors, right? It is, it, it is actually a tool for oppression and for maintaining the status quo. It is. I mean, they're right, totally right about that, right? So I'm changing, changing everything. And today is the day to uh, announce that. So it's really great that you guys are the first ones to hear that. You know, I'm changing everything. So I'm changing my message from gratitude heals, energizes, and changes lives to just say no thanks to gratitude. <laughs> All right. Uh, just kidding, of course, you know. Um, in the words of one of my uh, heroes, Martin Luther, 500 years and two weeks ago, the great reformer said, here I stand, I can do no other. And that, for me, is to brag about gratitude. He didn't say that last part, but gratitude is just so powerful, as Emiliana said, that it, it, it works in so many different ways. And it's just great that so many people have come on board and have acknowledged that and are trying to you know, really unpack gratitude in all its nuances and layers and levels and what it is and why it matters. And that's what I've been trying to do for almost 20 years now. People say he's the expert on gratitude. And I tell my students, the way to become an expert on a topic is to define that topic so narrowly that nobody else could possibly you know, want to be the expert or know anything about it. You know, it's just really you know, go deeper and deeper into a smaller and smaller. Well, gratitude actually is not a small area. It's a very big area, and the, the field, the bandwidth is very wide. So it's awesome to lead off today and have a chance to... I just want to share a few ideas, not get real elaborate. It's not going to be a huge uh, overview of all the research, but just throw out a few ideas, things I've been thinking about, thinking about gratitude in the workplace and some lessons I've learned from the science of gratitude that have relevance for how we study gratitude in the world of work or workplaces. Okay, so let me move that along there for you. Okay, I just want to start with just a basic definition. Uh, it's interesting, you know, in academia, we debate definitions for years, and you think you've got it settled, and you say, okay, this is what this concept is, and then before you know it, no, someone says it's something else, and then not everyone agrees, and not everyone will agree, and that's fine. But this is the way I think about it, and it makes some sense, at least uh, to me, that there's really two aspects to gratitude. When we say we're grateful for something, we're actually celebrating that good thing, right? We're saying yes to life, or at least yes to some aspects of life. So, you know, a week from now, a week from yesterday, is the annual gratitude holiday, which is a celebration. People get together all over this place to celebrate the great F's of family, food, feasts, and football. Not necessarily in that order, but, you know, that's the annual gratitude holiday. That's a celebration. Well, and every day in every way, we celebrate when we receive a gift. Someone is kind to us. They do a favor for us. They provide for us something that we could not provide for ourselves. That's, that's a celebration, kind of a mini celebration of saying yes to life, affirming the good, and then recognizing this person or this other. I say recognizing the other, because it could be not necessarily a person, it could be a, a spiritual force, it could be a spiritual being, it could be a pet, an animal. It's something that you see as giving you that benefit, as rendering a kindness or a favor for you. You say yes, I accept that, I take in that good, and I celebrate that. That's what gratitude is, okay? So gratitude works is the 
two-word phrase that I've come to adopt and really just summarizes about 20 years of research. How do you like that? You can summarize 20 years of research in two words, right? Gratitude works. How many of you believe that gratitude works today? Okay. Uh, how many of you believe that there's always, always, always something to be thankful for? Well, I guess we're all done here then. I mean, we know to, <laughs> our work is done, right? Well, let's talk about some of those uh, lessons. You know, a lot of people have been studying gratitude as well. It began a long, long time ago, uh, around the first part of this uh, century, 2000. You, that's basically a graph which shows the acceleration, the explosion of research, thanks to the uh, overwhelmingly generous Templin Foundation, who has now provided several millions of dollars for research on the basic science and also the practice of gratitude and the lines, the bars just keep going up and up. There's, this is just from Psych Info. There's a very similar graphic from the medical literature from PubMed and others as well. You just see a huge explosion in recent years in the science and also in some of the ways in which gratitude has been applied in different settings. So that's really cool, really exciting to see. Still yet, though, gratitude in the workplace or organizational settings, not quite jumping on board as quickly as the field of medicine or education or basic research. So a little bit later coming to the game, uh, we're still those starting to see just recently, uh, I have a number of papers that come across my desk on gratitude in organizational settings. So I think we're going to start seeing a, uh, an increase and play some catch up in this particular field. Gratitude works in so many different ways. This uh, slide shows six different panels summarizing many, many different studies looking at psychological well-being, emotional health, relational well-being, uh, giving, pro-social behavior like generosity, depression and mental health. You know, grateful people are less likely to be depressed. They recover more quickly when they are depressed. They have a lower lifetime rate of all sorts of psychiatric disturbance. They're less prone to post-traumatic stress disorder. They recover more quickly from uh, small stressors, so the slow drip of everyday stress or massive stressors. Grateful people do better. And every day and every way, we're learning ways in which gratitude works, that the grateful mind and the grateful heart reap massive advantages across the spectrum. You really can't overplay the hand of gratitude. Well, that's all well and good, but what have we really learned about gratitude in the workplace? Well, there's social benefits, of course. And some of the strongest is that gratitude, because it's the relational strengthening emotion, it makes relationships stronger, and our connections are forged at a deeper level. It's something that helps them stay together in times of relational stress and strain. What maintains that relationship is gratitude, among other factors, but I think gratitude is a really important one. I've said it, it gets in the cracks of relationships and it strengthens them. It, it strengthens that bond between individuals. And sure enough, many, many studies are showing the social relational benefits because it's in the context of relationships where the power of gratitude or lack thereof is most strongly felt. Lessons learned. Let me talk about a few lessons. I have four. I'll go through these fairly quickly about what I've learned from the science of gratitude and then trying to apply it to understand gratitude in the workplace. Number one, be open to surprise. Gratitude does not always work in the way we think it's going to work or the way we expect it's going to work. Okay? Uh, these are three, I call the three S's of surprises, but I've learned that gratitude facilitates better sleep, it actually improves people's sense of self-esteem, and it's related to greater sense of self-control, self-regulation, or patience. See that dog there? That's not my dog. He would never do that. Right, but this one, that's, that's a lot of self-control to be able to sit there with a little biscuit on his nose. Um, last month, a Greater Good website published a little article that I, that I wrote with, with some help and where I talk about the surprising ways in which gratitude works in the workplace. And these, one of those was sleep. There are two others that you'll have to go and read the article if, if you want to know. But the point is, is that we think gratitude only does one thing. It's kind of monolithic. It improves moods or relationships or makes people more productive at work, whatever. But in fact, the many ways in which gratitude actually has its effects sometimes are very, very surprising and sometimes can actually be counterintuitive. So that's really uh, interesting uh, when that happens. All right, this, I've learned there's lots of myths when it comes to gratitude, that people have various ideas, and they're not always rooted in reality. We can point to the fact that when you 
hold these up to empirical scrutiny, they don't always hold up, that we can actually show that these are false in various ways. These are just a few of these ideas, right? That, uh, for example, gratitude is a form of positive thinking, right? It's just thinking good about something, right? Um, that it's kind of this, oh, I don't know, overly positive way of looking at, at life. So recently I had a little email exchange back and forth with an editor at the Wall Street Journal who's the editor of the Weekend uh, edition, okay, and he wanted to do an article. It was kind of fishing around, you know, as, as journalists and editors do, fishing around for different ideas. And uh, he said, well, send me a, a few things about the latest findings on gratitude, right? So I, I put together, like, you know, overly did it, like eight paragraphs, you know, two pages of all the, all the findings, right, quantitative findings, ways in which gratitude makes a difference, the ways in which gratitude works. And he comes back and, and he says uh, something like, it's hard, it's not, not, not something like exactly what he said. It's hard to get people to take gratitude seriously as something more than a fuzzy, positive disposition. It's like totally wrong. I'm sorry. It's like, you know, I mean, it's a high def definition. It's a high def concept. It's not fuzzy, right? We, we've known from now, that's the whole point of all those slides and all those studies. We've learned a lot of ways in which gratitude is not fuzzy. It's very specific what these effects are, but somehow people... And I'm not sure what he meant by who, who he meant by people, but there are people who just have this belief, this 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 false belief that gratitude is just kind of this warm, uh, fuzzy feeling. So that's one particular uh, issue that has to be, I think, uh, confronted. The last one is very interesting. Withholding gratitude is motivated. What does that mean? Well, did you ever do a favor for someone? And you went on your way to be kind, do something nice for them, right? And you get nothing in return. Totally no response. Not necessarily ungrateful, but just kind of like forgetful. They don't express gratitude. It's a little frustrating, right? And we think, you know, what an awful person sometimes. What an ingrate. You know, don't they realize, you know, how much effort I went to? We, we start to infer all these dark and, and deep motives about what they've done. Well, the fact is maybe they just, you know, there's a lot of reasons why they could have not expressed uh, the gratitude. I thought I had another one in there, but I don't see it in there. Um, the fact is that sometimes people just get distracted, right? Uh, or they, th there's a delay because they work on a different time scale. So you provide a benefit for them, and they're not going to repay you right away. You know, be nice if, if they maybe acknowledge a little bit, but maybe they're, they're working up to it down the road, right? It's like you have somebody over for dinner, at the end of the night, you don't say, okay, well, you come over tomorrow night, right, and so on, or because you don't like to deal with that sense of indebtedness. So they might be on a different time scale or time frame than you. Maybe they don't have good social skills. They don't know how to express gratitude. Maybe you don't receive gratitude too well, and they know that, so they're sensitive to that. You see, there's all these nuances. So before we infer these nefarious motives when people who are not seemingly grateful right away, maybe cut them a little bit of slack, you know, and that could make for smoother, more harmonious, well-oiled relationships. Right? So that's another one of these uh, myths. Uh, Ryan Fair, who is uh, here today, is going to talk to you. So point number C comes from his wonderful article on workplace gratitude, a very comprehensive article that everyone should read. And he says the obstacle he reaches, I hope I'm not... Um, uh, scooping him here, but he, he said that, you know, if you say thank you, it means you can't get stuff done. You're almost admitting the ability to need help, and that could be uh, something you'd be afraid to do in workplace settings. I, I need help on this. I can't do it all myself. Well, th that could have various negative connotations and consequences, but in fact, it doesn't mean that at all. It actually, I found and we found a research that gratitude frees you to admit that you need the help. It actually makes you stronger, not weaker. Okay, this is very important obstacle. Uh, lesson number three, acknowledging obstacles. And this is one which may be a little counterintuitive, but I've learned all from studying individuals and how people strive to be grateful in their lives. And that is they can try too hard. You know, there's a whole literature on trying to be happy. If you try to be happy, does it work? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, right? It actually can, can undermine, make you less successful at being happy. So it can with the case with gratitude. You try too hard to be grateful. So I'm going to monitor my gratitude today. So let me see. 
Um, yesterday, I, I think I was a four on the five-point scale, and I want to be a five. That's how am I doing today? And then, you know, I was a three last week. And, and so you start to get so obsessed and self-preoccupied with your own level of gratitude, you start to forget that gratitude is not about you at all. It's about other people doing things for you. It's about an other focus, not a self-focus, right? You get so absorbed with your own, your own progress or lack thereof, you start to forget about who you are, who is out there to be grateful to in the first place, you know? And so I'm very much opposed to these, uh, some of these programs that really focus so much on individual pursuit and have gratitude as something extra to do, like what I call the, the try harder, work more, uh, run faster, jump higher, to-do list gratitude. I'm just going to add it on to my list of everyday activities, and I'm going to become a better, more grateful person. Well, we found it doesn't work that way. It really has to be a way of looking at life that's really integrated into your everyday activities. Part of who you are, part of your identity is that of a grateful person, not just another activity. It's not an app. It's not an add-on app. It's part of our, our built-in uh, DNA is part of our operating system. You know, it's not an app that you can add on after the fact. Well, this occurred to me most recently. Last week, I was speaking at a Kaiser Permanente event in Southern California. One of the speakers was a wellness uh, guru, CEO of a wellness organization. And he was citing a New York Times article that talked about how many workplace wellness programs actually backfire. They don't work. And he cited these uh, had headline after headline of places where they would, you know, install um, gyms and hiking trails and meditation rooms and offer yoga classes and found out that the gyms were empty, people weren't on the trails, nobody signed up for the yoga classes and so on and so forth. But that was so odd, giving people all these opportunities. Well, it was because they perceived that if they were using these opportunities, people would think they didn't have enough work to do. They, they just, you know, felt okay to goof off. Hey, I don't, you know, I'm going to go for a walk now. You guys take, you know, you figure out this project, right? And let me know. Uh, I'm going to take a walk now. I'm going to go meditate for a while. And uh, I'm a little stressed here today. And so nobody was, because there wasn't support from the organization. There wasn't a culture that was supporting them. It, it thought it was a good idea. But people were worried about how they would be perceived if they were taking uh, um, part in all these various activities. So we have to ask the question, similarly with, with gratitude, can attempts to impose gratitude undermine a culture of gratefulness? And again, Ryan, I think, has some great ideas about this. And um, for example, if, if it's seen as a way of to extract more work from people, right? If it's seen as a way of to extract more work from people, right? If it's seen as a way of to extract more work out of people, we're going to express gratitude. You're going to work harder, you know, because of that. It could actually uh, backfire, much as some of those workplace wellness initiatives uh, seem to do. Okay. Number four. Lesson number four is appreciate nuances. I mentioned this earlier. With gratitude, there's so many layers and levels and nuances. And again, we could unpack it in various ways. What does it mean? Um, talk about, Mike's going to talk about appreciation and recognition in gratitude. But the one point, well, two points I want to make here. Number one is that gratitude does not only flow downhill. All right? We often think in organizational settings that gratitude starts at the top and goes down in this downward fashion. And almost any article you read or any blog you read always talks about, you know, grateful bosses or grateful leadership. The idea is that it's supposed to be supervisors and high-level managers are supposed to express gratitude downward. But it also flows in the other direction, of course, that supervisees can express gratitude to supervisors. And there's been some recent research studies, I think, still impressed looking at that and how that's really, really critical. That's what we what might call upward gratitude. And Many organizations have shown that horizontal gratitude or peer-to-peer -peer gratitude is especially powerful, especially effective. In other words, it doesn't only have to flow uh, downhill. So that was one of those nuances. Another one is the finding that, uh, as I think Jason uh, mentioned this, the well-known finding that uh, such a high percentage of people don't feel they're receiving enough gratitude, enough recognition. And I was concerned about that too. I thought, yeah, that's really good evidence that you know we need to do, be doing a better job. The number that always gets mentioned, and so forth. And but I thought about it a little bit differently when I gave a talk to one of my units on campus at UC Davis up the road there, and he's a, a leader, supervisor in this organization. I was telling him about this statistic because he wanted me to come and talk about gratitude to his his uh, colleagues and the people that he supervises. 
And I said, you know, the studies are showing that, you know, people are not experiencing gratitude and so on. And he said, well, the problem he has is that they expect gratitude for a job well done, but then they produce a job that's not well done, and that still expect gratitude. Oh, well, that's true, I guess, you know. So maybe the, you know, the gratitude will follow productivity and job well done, and maybe that 67%, maybe it's a little inflated, uh, because maybe, you know, there's just not sufficient reason to say, thank you, you've done a good job, when in fact the job could have been better. It's, at least that was, you know, uh, his take on it. And also, 74% of those people are not expressing upward gratitude to the people that are supervising them. So, you know, I mean, basic rule of behavior, right? If you, wanna, uh, you want people to treat you as you treat them, right? And so if we're not expressing gratitude to those supervising us, how is it that we expect so much more of them to express gratitude to us? So just one nuance there is just suggesting gratitude flows in different directions, not always one word, not always the obvious way. And sometimes there's, there's more meaning behind these statistics than it would appear uh, to be the case. One minute, perfect. Okay, so uh, lest I seem to leave you on kind of a critical note there, saying kind of all the problems or flaws or myths or issues, obstacles, uh, and so on, I just want to suggest one, this is my only practice that I have to suggest. I know you're going to focus a lot more later on on practices for uh, gratitude in, in workplace settings. But people say, do you have a quick practice? What can I go out and do that, you know, it doesn't involve changing my entire personality structure, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, well, there's, there's some quick things you can do, okay? And this is what I call the two-minute miracle, which involves finding someone in your workplace, community, neighborhood, home, whatever, some, someone that typically doesn't get a lot of attention, probably doesn't get a lot of recognition, a lot of praise, a lot of expressions of gratitude, and, and thank them for what they're doing. Right? Maybe it might be the first time they ever hear words of gratitude you know, uh, on the job. You can find that person and you can speak words of gratefulness, thankfulness to them. What we've learned is that speaking words of thankfulness is, is linguistic medicine that heals both the speaker as well as the receiver. This is my friend Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy works for the uh, grounds maintenance department at UC Davis and goes around and you know, fixes stuff up and that sort of thing. Uh, last spring, for several days, he was working on, this is the, the original entrance to the campus of UC Davis. There's a brick wall. It says UC Davis. All of the graduates come, not all of them, but most of them come there to get their graduation pictures taken with all their regalia, family, friends. They, they line up uh, near this wall for weeks before the several commencements because of different colleges and so forth. But, and I can see all this from my office because my office looks out at this wall. So there's a line that stretches sometimes like half a mile, especially on the weekends when you're getting very close to graduation. So he's out there and he's, he's basically cleaning this wall so that it looks good for these graduation pictures. You know? And I'm watching, it's like three days in a row he's doing. So I go out there. Probably because I'm curious, like, why would it take three days to, you know, but also because I have nothing to do, because I'm a professor, right? So only, I, don't, I only work, you know, three hours a week, all right? So I go out there and start talking to him, you know? And so, so what are you doing? I said, do you know people come and take their pictures? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. And, you know, just trying to make it look nice for them and their family. And he's, he's, so, in, he's so into his job, right? You can see he's got the brush. Oh, I think you see that in his... Um, right hand. He's telling me all of the weathering process about what happens to the wall over time and how, to, how much pressure to apply, you know, to the mortar between the bricks and so forth. And it's just fascinating, right? And I, I said, I want to thank you on behalf of all the, because they'll never see them, right? They don't have no clue that someone's actually out there doing this job so they can have nice graduation pictures. So then at the end, I say, okay, uh, I want to get a picture, right? And he says, here, let me get out of the way. I said, no, I want to get a picture of you, not of the wall, right? Because I want people to know that there are Jimmys like this behind the scenes doing things. And that's what gratitude is. It's focusing on the unseen behind the scene, right? So that's the two-minute, find a Jimmy. Find the Jimmy in your workplace. Thank them, recognize them for a job well done. It might be the only words of thankfulness they hear uh, for a long, long time. So... Thank you. With that, I'll turn it over to my colleague up here, Mike. Thanks.